una ni na ibalita umiinit na ang Miami Heat sa ongoing NBA season with five straight wins. Legit dark horse contender that talaga ba sa East ang Miami. May bala kaya ang big boss nilang si Pat Riley na i-trade ang kanyang magagaling na rotation players para sa isang totoong superstar. At may chance kaya ang manalo si Coach Po ng Coach of the Year Award. Para sa usapan na yan, kasama natin ang basketball vlogger na si Nico Baguio. Nico, welcome back to the score. Always great happy New Year. Here. Good to yeah, see you. Okay, year. very exciting things going on sa Miami Heat para sa ating kababayan si Coach Po. Eerie enough, this is around the same time of the year last year. Yeah. Nag simula yung kanilang run when they yeah. turned things around 180 degrees. So a bad start. Literally. Literally. Diba? literally 1031 to 31 and 10. Exactly. And you, you love numbers. So that was such a <laughs> quirky number look for you, of course. But um, this is different now because th this year they came in this season uh, because of that good run in the second half of the yeah. season last year. Everybody said they should now be a playoff team. Uh, right. But they had their ups and downs. Injuries, obviously, yeah. was a big challenge for them with Hassan in and out and Paris Dragic. But yeah. five-game winning streak. They've had some solid wins as well against the Jet teams like the Boston Celtics as well. But uh, overall, uh, how do you see the Miami Heat looking like so far this year? Well, I think the Miami Heat are where they should be okay. right now. Um, right now, I think they're fifth, tied with Washington mm -hmm. for that 4-5 spot. Right. But, so, parang ibang nagrarap pa nga, nagiging 4 sila. Yeah, yeah. Oh. pwede sila mag-4. Pero mm -hmm. I think by the by season's end, I think they'll be right around that 5-6 area. Okay. Kasi they're, they're better than Indiana and uh, Detroit mm -hmm. and all that. Pero they're not better than the Boston Celtics, right. the Cleveland, the Toronto, the Toronto and the Washingtons. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, the re... Kung titignan mo yung roster nila, they aren't as talented as the ones uh, in the top four. Yep. But not, parang equal talent lang sila dun sa below them. But right, right. the thing that lifts them up is I think the coaching of Coach Spo, which is okay. I think underrated right mm -hmm. now. Um, I think he's the second longest tenured coach in the NBA. Yep. Um, second only to Greg to pop. Popovich. <laughs> yeah. Grabe, no? And then, um, kumbaga, nakalimutan na ng mga tao si Coach Spo because mm. the big three eras ended yep. and Hindi na sila ganun ka in the spotlight, unlike before. But I think right now, they're still a pretty good team. And I don't think he minds. Uh, knowing the, yeah. the culture of the Miami Heat, Coach Po wouldn't mind being an underdog and working his way up like that. Yeah. Okay, these last five games, a uh, very interesting winning streak they've had. This tough win against Toronto today. Actually, the back-to-back -back games, both were down the wire. Yeah, uh, yeah. Final uh, plays, out of timeouts, drawn up by Coach Po. Uh, as well, I mean, you talk about coaching, Nico. There's also such thing as clutch coaching. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yung, lalo ko mga kahapon eh, hindi mo na siya nag-timeout. Yeah. He, he tried to get a run yeah, yeah, uh, on transition yeah. and nung wala, tumayamout siya and then he got the right play. Talk about that in terms of how clutch he's been as well in terms of trying to find the right timing, yeah, to call yeah. a timeout, to call the right play so far. Yeah, as a coach, I think one of the things I learned when I became an assistant coach for Ateneo mm -hmm. is that as a coach, your job is to manage the game yep know when to time when to call a timeout mm -hmm. when to pull a player out right. when to uh, call a certain set to get your team into a good offensive rhythm or right. defensive rhythm mm -hmm. coach spo has that uh he nails that part really well and mm -hmm. we could see that in the last few games um as you said he tried to push the pace didn't call a timeout mm -hmm. when most uh coaches would have called the timeout would, right there yeah. because he wanted the uh, his team to attack a defense that was not set. Right. Pero yun nga, nung wala, he called this beautiful uh, sideline out of bounds play where um, there was a lot of different actions yep. happening. There was a scissor cut in the in the middle with mm -hmm. a down screen and then yep. a flare screen. And then, kumbaga, it was such a beautifully designed play na actually, when you watch the game winner against ni Wayne Ellington. Today, this morning, yeah. Yeah. Namintis nga yung pass kay Olenik doon. Yeah, he was wide he open. He was wide <laughs> open. And it didn't matter because yeah. the passer had two options. Yeah. Yep. Good thing good thing Wayne Ellington was also an option there. Kasi yep. sayang yung pass na yun. Correct, yeah. And that's the beauty of a good coach or mm -hmm. a well-coached team. Yep. Um, with Even without the talent, they can still win a couple of games above their expected um, win total. Which right. is, I think, for Miami, it's around 41, 42. Right. But... Uh, with their pace, they're expected to win around 46, 48. Yeah. And I think that's all on Coach Spoke. And it's interesting that, you know, again, as you said, this is really a lot on Coach Spoke because you have a team that they don't really have an A++ star right now. Oh, yeah, I yeah. mean, the Sun white side is there. You yeah, B-minus. You know, B-minus, probably. Still, he had a good run last two years, but... 
kind of disappointing how he's not yet really jumped leaps yeah, and bounds. Yeah. Goran Dragic still not yet there as well. Dion Waiters on and off. You never know hey, which Dion Waiters you're gonna get. <laughs> exactly. But but um, talk about defense. Iba yung opensa na you get sometimes from your stars and what they used to get before from the Dwayne Wade's and the LeBron James and Chris Bosh. But their defense has been that's a system. That's a culture thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that that the Pat Riley culture has had throughout. Yeah. You know, and uh, how have they been doing it again and again? And just this morning, they held down the Raptors, who were very efficient, normally 40 plus per 47 percent, less than 40 percent today. Of course, without Kyle Lowry, but still, iba yeah. yung the way the Raptors have been playing. They have also been underappreciated with the yeah. way they've been playing. So for the, how they beat them today, you know, it says a lot about the Heat. Yeah. Um, it's it's really a culture thing. Mm. Um. You, you read a lot of interviews of um, Heat players who, who come into the program, yep. especially, for example, James Johnson. Yep. Um, Goran Dragic just came into the uh, Zach Lowe podcast, if you mm -hmm. listen to it. Okay. Um, they talk about the difference in culture, mm -hmm. in a sense that Ma the Miami Heat culture actually takes care of you. Mm -hmm. So, And they're very, very diligent and detailed about how they take care of their players. So mm -hmm. if they want you to go to or they're trying to get you to the program, that means they really like you yeah. and they already have a system in place for you if you go there. Right, right, and right. I think that helps with Coach Spo and Pat and the entire coaching staff, the, program, uh, the development staff, being there for a long time already. Mm -hmm. na once a player comes in, there is a path. Correct. Unlike with other organizations that they'll, they'll figure out the player's path once he's there. Nang rather than sila. yeah, okay. rather than before pa dumating yung player, alam na nila yung path. And exactly. That helps a lot with defense where chemistry is Yo, very important, right. communication is very important, trust is very important, mm. culture is very important. Yep. The Miami Heat, uh, they've been equalizing their talent gap using defense, right. which is a very switchy, aggressive type of defense na pinas pinasikat nila nung big three era right, right, with yep. uh, LeBron as that um, roamer. Right mm -hmm. now, it's James Johnson. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Hassan Whiteside or Kelly Olenek or uh, some other big men form that final rim protection right. inside when they the switches don't work. Interesting. So now, here they are. They're, they're fourth tied at fourth and fifth at 23 and 17. Mm -hmm. Question is, do you, if you're Pat Riley, and then of course you consult Coach Poe, do you pull the trigger before the trade deadline for a legit star? If you want to, you know, up the ante, as you said, on paper, obviously they don't have the star power yeah. to compete with the big three in the east of, you know, uh, the Celtics, the Cavs, and the Raptors, maybe even the Wizards. Um, do you pull that trigger? Send some key young guys with potential for a, a more established star? Well, the question is, will another team do it? Also. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, because... Obviously, Pat Riley will want to do it, mm -hmm. but the question is, do they have the assets? Yeah. Um, they're uh, cash strapped right now. Mm -hmm. um, Hassan White, most of their players are actually on long-term deals, yeah. three, three four-year long-term deals, Dragic, Whiteside, right. and then the newly signed James Johnson, mm -hmm. Waiters, mm -hmm. um, Olinik, uh, Richardson, and uh, John uh, the White. White lefty uh, mm -hmm. John, Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. They're all locked in into three, four year long term Correct. contracts. Mahaba. And That's right. that will be hard to trade even yeah. if those players are uh, good. Because yep. some GMs might view them in the same way that GMs view Spurs players. Yeah. Kumbaga, nagiging system players sila. Will mm -hmm. they work as well without, outside, that outside of that right, system? So right, that's right. the question. Yeah, I yeah. think if they have a chance, they will do it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, I mean, I, I don't like saying it, but like for example, they could pull a trade for DeMarcus Cousins, who's a free agent. Um, <laughs> of course, you won't like saying it because yeah, it's the I only like Pelican fan in the Philippines. So. <laughs> uh, but if they could pull yeah. a trigger for that, they will mm -hmm. definitely. Because okay. they believe in their culture, yep. they believe in their system, and they believe they can convince free agents or yeah. soon-to-be free agents to re-sign back there. But the, the bigger question isn't, whether Pat will do it, yeah. but whether other GMs will. All right. So that's the tricky part. That's yeah. the that's the, the murky part of the GM world that uh, is already happening as we speak before yeah. this trade deadline comes up. And all right. So that's what it is. And do you do you expect them to get out of the first round? Uh, as you said, you easily see them there at, at around the fourth to sixth numbers. You, do they get out of the first round? I think they won't. Okay. But it will be a very competitive first round. Um, nobody in the top 
four will want to face them in the first round. Union, for yeah, sure. Yeah, they're the yeah. scariest among the five, six, seven, eight teams. For sure. It should be another fun battle. And by the way, their next game is against another uh, competitive team, the Indiana Pacers. Should be a really fun one as well. Nico Baggio, maraming salam. Thank you. See you next week. For more sports updates, keep watching The Score. And don't forget to subscribe.